Um, how bad is the situation on the ground there in Chalki, where you are? Oh, the situation remains uh, uh, tragic here in the Philippines. We've been here uh, for over three days, but it's been very difficult. Actually, it's been a logistical nightmare to try and get to those areas that have been hit the hardest by Typhoon Haiyan. As I speak to you uh, right now, we are at the Cebu uh, province, um, and we've just come back from a military uh, Air Force Base, where all the humanitarian uh, aid is being coordinated from in terms of delivery. Uh, we spoke to a number of senior officials uh, who told us that the more uh, aid uh, from uh, different countries around the world is streaming in, we were supposed to fly out to go uh, into one of those areas that have been affected uh, by the typhoon, but the flight had to be grounded due to security concerns. There's also no electricity in those areas, so the officials are concerned that it will also be difficult to try and navigate uh, the aircraft in terms of landing and takeoff. They are also raising security concerns that if we are going there with supplies, there could be uh, looting. So our mission has been put on hold until uh, any uh, tomorrow morning uh, local time. What are the locals saying about the assistance that they have been receiving thus far? At the airport day, we also managed to speak to some of uh, the survivors of uh, Typhoon Haiyan. Uh, there is an area where uh, people are being treated as well as being given food and medical supplies. Uh, they say uh, since day one when the typhoon hit, uh, there's over 5,000 people that have been evacuated from the various islands. Islands. You recall that this is a country of over 7,100 islands, so it's quite a massive country. And then in there at uh, the center, I saw an old man who said that um, uh, when uh, the typhoon hit, uh, his home was flooded and the water came up to his neck, but he was, uh, he was rescued and he was sitting there on a wheelchair. Uh, telling me of uh, the bad situation back home, uh, they are being assisted uh, by the various uh, humanitarian uh, organizations from uh, around the world. So, as I said earlier, from tomorrow we are going to be chartering a barge so that we can venture into those areas. The South African team has brought in uh, uh, 30 people uh, here on the ground. They include the uh, uh, doctors, nurses, as well as search and rescue officials, a few officers who will be uh, going out to assist uh, in terms of search and rescue, as well as the recovery of, of bodies that are still out there. Now, you are traveling with the South African aid organization, Gift of the Givers. What role are they playing in the Philippines currently? They want to play a multi role here. Uh, I'm talking about the distribution of food. Uh, uh, the rebuilding, uh, if there is a need, as well as the distribution of uh, medical supplies. Obviously, a lot of people uh, need medicines. Uh, a lot of people need to be attended to in terms of uh, attending to their injuries uh, as survivors of uh, that uh, Typhoon Ayan, where here they call it uh, Typhoon Yolanda. Uh, but I know that uh, among the 30 people that we have here, there are people that will be playing that role of trying to recover uh, uh, some of the uh, bodies that are still lying around on the streets in those affected areas and also assisting local officials here in making sure that people are given that dignified uh, burial or also the preservation of their bodies again uh, until those uh, uh, funerals when they do take place. Njanji, thank you so much for that update. That's Njanji Chauke, our reporter on the scene uh, in Tlacoban in the Philippines.